Hello, and welcome to the Urban Dharma in C podcast. In this sixth part of a series, Dorje Lopan Dr. Hanlai teaches about the songs of Mila Repa, the 11th century Tibetan saint who reached the ultimate state of awakening. The presentation of these profound songs is integrated with teachings on the Guru Yoga of Mila Repa Sadhana in order to introduce a more contemplative and experience-based approach to practicing this liturgy. Urban Dharma is a Buddhist temple in the heart of Asheville, North Carolina. We are supported by your generosity and by our online store at TibetanSpirit.com. To learn more about us, come visit our temple in person or look us up online at UdharmaNC.com. Thanks for listening. So the next uh, of the Milarepa songs that we're going to look at is called the Song of Nine Meanings. So there's nine sections to this one. Starting on page three of the Songs book, not the Sadhana book. So the story, there's a story behind this song of nine meanings. Uh, as I said, Milarepa did not have an easy uh, way to let people know that he's a religious person living on the generosity of others. So he went about uh, when he could, when he was up in retreat in the mountains, he mostly ate nettles. So that's why there's a lot of representations of Milarepa has his um, complexion uh, blue-green because it's said that he ate so much nettles, stinging nettles, that his skin turned blue-green. Um, uh, just to point out, in the sadhana, it says that he is uh, kind of reddish-white in complexion. Uh, so slightly different from the usual. And for those of you who are familiar with Milarepa sadhanas, uh, another kind of unusual characteristic is that it's said that uh, he holds a skull cup uh, in his left hand, and in his right hand he's holding a loft, uh, a um, vajra. Like that, so he has a slightly different uh, form. Yeah? He's, he's he's sitting like that. Um, so here, um, so he was. Uh, then when he came down to the village, uh, whether he's traveling or he's meeting people, when he came down to the village. Uh, then he had to beg for food. And so one day, he came into the house of one house in the village, and there was nobody there, and so he walked you know, into the courtyard <coughs> of the house, and there was nobody there. So she, he walked further inside to try to find somebody. <coughs> and suddenly, an old lady this old elderly woman, but feisty, with a lot of energy, comes barging out of the house and shoving Milarepa out. 
and started to accuse him for being a thief because he could sort of look like one. I'm, I'm kempt hair, dirty, probably smelly. Although you don't smell that easy in Tibet, actually, because the air is so dry. <laughs> so you can go for years without showering and um, not much smell. But nonetheless, it's quite obvious this is not a quote-unquote respectable, respectable member of society, of polite society. So, so then she started yelling at him and say, are you trying to rob uh, my daughter-in-law's jewelry uh, coming into our house like that? And Milarepa said, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a yogi, meaning a religious practitioner, and I just need some food. And so then she continued to yell at him and say, you no good, you know, yogis, um, not contributing to society, uh, cheating other people's food, uh, and just being a lazy bum. Uh, you know, probably he was young too, Milarepa, you know. It's like, you know, why don't you go get a job, right? Um, she just yelled at him. And then he said, in typical Milarepa style, she starts singing. <laughs> This is where all these songs come from. And so he said to her, Are you done yelling? She did not answer. He said, Let me sing you a song. And this is the song that he sang. Above are the pleasures of the higher realms, below the miseries of the three lower realms. In between your helplessness to choose your destiny. When these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. You are an angry woman who detests the Dharma. Really, you should practice the Dharma by relying on a qualified Lama. When you were first betrothed to this family, did you ever dream you'd become an old nanny goat? <laughs> you know, he, 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 you know, read all these songs and stories, he, he had a way with his words, you know. And he, sometimes he's funny, sometimes he's biting, you know. Here, a mix of both, you know. So here he's saying, you know, so within, in our Buddhist cosmology, we say there are six realms of existence within the cycle of confusion that we call samsara. And, um, and these six can be basically divided into the three higher realms and the three lower realms. Human beings belong to one of the three higher realms where there is relatively more leisure and pleasure than there is suffering and misery. Then obviously the three lower realms is where it's predominantly suffering. The three lower realms are the hell realms, the hungry spirits realm, and the animal realm. The three higher realms are the realm of humans, demigods, and gods. But each of these six realms, they have their relative happiness and suffering, but they also have predominant qualities of afflictions. So for example, it said that beings in the hell realms are predominantly occupied with, tortured by, uh, constantly perpetuating uh, ill will, hatred, and anger. Uh, so you can think of these as states of mind and states of existence regardless of what kind of body you have. If you are tortured and controlled by your anger, your resentment, your hatred, your ill will, then for all intents and purposes, you are in the hell realms. Uh, you are in the 
in, and then in the realm of hungry spirits, uh, it's um, um, the kind of hunger, the kind of want and, and desire that cannot be quenched. In the animal realm, uh, it's said that they are controlled by uh, ignorance. But here, you know, we're not talking about uh, that they are not as smart as we humans. In many ways, if you observe right, the animal world, of course, in this system, humans are not part of the animal world. It's how you categorize things. Uh, that uh, in the animal world... Um, um, we know, you know, in many ways they are way smarter than we humans are. <clears throat> but here when they say that they are controlled by ignorance, I, really what it's saying is that they have no power over inborn instincts. Yeah? A tiger has no choice. It's incapable. It huh? doesn't have the liberty of saying, from today onwards, I'm going to be vegan. No matter how many lives it takes, it, it has no ability uh, to decide that as an ethical um, uh, choice. Uh, because instincts is what drives them. And so to the degree that if our lives, even if we have a human form, is completely controlled by instincts, then we can say, right? We even say that. Huh? You're behaving like an animal. But that's really what we mean. You know? Not that animals do not exhibit love you know, for their babies. Some do, some don't. But to be controlled by instincts. And so ignorance in that sense right? cannot make... Huh? ethical choices of not causing harm that possibility is not there for them uh, then in the three higher realms in the human realm uh, it's said to be uh, attachments or ambitions sometimes it's also said to be sloth kind of complacency. Yeah. Eh, it's not so bad. Eh, it's not fantastic, but it's not so bad. Yeah. Just kind of kind of sloth, laziness. Uh, in the um, demigods is jealousy. And in the god realms uh, it's pride. But no, you can't get to the God realm for being prideful. You also need to have a lot of good merit. But good merit that is mixed with a lot of pride. I am better than everyone. Here, here, here. I'll give donations, but I'm better than everyone. Here, let's feed more people, but I'm better than all of you that I'm feeding. Yeah, Let's build more hospitals so that people don't have to suffer, but I'm better than everyone. Yeah, pride. Mixed with merit, born in the God realms. And then there, they are also proud. And that pride can also be very subtle, but nonetheless always present. Which is, I don't get it. Why are y'all complaining? I don't get it. Why are you complaining? Why do you think things are bad? They're incapable of seeing other people suffering. You know? Not necessarily because they're bad, but they're, they're pride. You know? it makes them blind to other people's needs, other people's suffering. You know? So, God realm. So Miladepa said, and in the midst of this, in between, 
your helplessness to choose where you go in the next lifetime. There's no... You can't buy a definite ticket to this or that realm. And again, if you don't want to think of you know, next life, even in this life, when you are, let's say you find yourself in the hell realm, right? And you're very angry and resentful. As much as you want to get out, you're helpless. All of us have experienced being stuck and not able right, to move ourselves out of whatever emotional state that we don't want to be in. Completely helpless. Then we get tortured there until uh, the causes for that uh, exhaust. Meanwhile, we create a lot of seats for future repeats. <laughs> Sequels. Because the show has been so good. <laughs> so we plan our sequels. <laughs> and then sometimes prequels. In between your helplessness to choose your destiny. So when these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. Again, that means your hopes, your fears, yeah? when, you, when these two come together. Uh, the translation could be more literal in the sense it says, look at your thoughts. But I change it to movings in your heart. Uh, it, it, the, 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 the original in the book that I base this on has it as a uh, Look at the thoughts in your mind. But I chose this because sometimes in, 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 in our way of thinking, you know, not in the Buddhist way, but in our way of thinking, we, th we think that thoughts only refer to like kind of discursive thoughts. But it's, it includes all the things like feelings, emotions, all of that is thoughts. Again, mind then we think is the intellect, right? So I chose a more kind of, hopefully, a more evocative expression, movings in your heart. And so your heart moves. Right? It, it trembles. Right? Whether trembling with fear or excitement. Right? When these three conditions convene, come together, right? there's movings in your heart. And then you become, right? and this is what you have become. Yeah? You have become an angry woman who detests the Dharma. So he says, but really, you should practice the Dharma by relying on a qualified teacher. One who will actually guide you. One who will, like I said this morning, not be concerned about the eight worldly concerns of praise, blame, fame, defame, pain, pleasure, gain, loss. Marpa could care less. And then Milarepa could care less. <laughs> Thrown it yeah, into the winds. Uh, hard to find. Uh, but it says you have to find someone like that. And then they can truly um, help us. <laughs> when you were first betrothed to this family, did you ever dream you become an an old nanny goat. <laughs> so that must have, like, you know, I'm sure, you know, hit her like, whoa. Like, what just happened? You know, meaning, like, you can imagine, like, and it says, you know, in this story, that she was, you know, struck by that. Strong words, but like, yeah, what just happened in my life? Flashback to you know, when she was first betrothed. So this tells us it's probably a wealthy family. Uh, but now, you know, when she was a young bride, uh, more typical of most families in Tibet, uh, 
people don't have like formal weddings and betrothal and all that. Uh, much more basic. Uh, there's no arranged marriage again, unless uh, a wealthy family, unless wealthy families are involved. Majority, uh, a man and a woman will live together, and then over time, when kids appear on the scene, then people will just be like, "Up, oh, they are family. That's it. There's no official marriage and." All of that. So this tells us that you know, she 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 can't, comes from, you know, a wealthy family, and now probably yeah, in still wealthy. You can see her having flashbacks to you know, the sweet wedding and when she was young, and suddenly now an old nanny goat, <laughs> angry, you know, mm-hmm. bitter. And then Milarepa continues. In the morning, you get up too early. And sometimes we all feel that. And in the evening, you go to bed too late. Too early in the morning. Waking, you know. In between, your housework is endless. And she's thinking, that's true. (laughs) When these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. You're now just an unpaid maid. Yeah? That's all she's, you know, good for, so to say. Just a maid, not even paid. Really, you should practice the Dharma instead by relying on a qualified Lama, and perhaps then it won't have to be like this. Not that it won't have to be that uh, these situations won't occur, but you won't feel this way, more importantly. Yeah? It's not saying that everybody who works, you know, who wakes up early, goes to bed late, uh, taking care of the family, is an unpaid maid. But he's saying, yeah, you are probably feeling like that. But if you practice the Dharma by relying on a qualified teacher, then perhaps it won't have to be like this. Doesn't mean now you can sleep late and go to bed early. (laughs) Doesn't mean that when you practice the Dharma, then you'll be a paid maid. (laughs) (laughs) But rather you don't have to feel or experience it in this way. And then he goes on. The patriarch of the family is is the most important one. Uh, Is most the important one. (laughs) It's the most important one. Incomes and earnings are next most longed for. So in this kind of patriarchal society, she's she's saying, your husband is the most important one in this family. Next is incomes and earnings. Then sons and nephews are wanted most. They are the ones that will defend the interests of the family, go out and seek wealth for the family. So when these three come together, Grandma... Look at the movings in your heart. For yourself, you have no share. You're not one of these three. Really, you should practice the Dharma 
by relying on a qualified Lama. And then perhaps it won't have to be like this. So our condition might not be, we might not live in a household where the patriarch of the family is most important. And then incomes and earnings are second, and then you know sons and nephews are third. No matter how you kind of rearrange these things, you know, we find ourselves in situations where we feel, you know, I'm not part of this. Whether it's workplace or family or, you know, wherever. Circumstances can be such that we feel, you know. Of course, this is a more extreme case of her. This is true to her condition, you know, probably very accurate to her condition. But but we, uh, even without being her, find ourselves in a situation where it feels like, you know, I'm not valued. Yes, uh, if you speak of social justice and all of that, There's plenty of work to do there. No denying that. But we have to protect our own heart and our own happiness. That's our first responsibility. Second responsibility then, of course, you know, then go go fight for what's rightfully, you know, that you should get your due, you know, especially if it's in a workplace or whatever. But first, protect your heart. Look at the movings in your heart. You're probably feeling that you have been treated unfairly. You're not valued as part of whatever it is. But if you practice the Dharma by relying on a qualified Lama, and perhaps then, it won't have to be like this. The thief who gets your things by stealth, the robber who resorts to force, your fighting back turns out to be all in vain. Theft and robbery were quite real in this world in the 12th century in Tibet. When these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. You are scorched with enemies when enemies are encountered. So these days, we don't think we have enemies. Or maybe the last couple of days, (laughs) we think we might have enemies. But generally, we don't, you know, the word enemy, we, we, we only treat it metaphorically. We say, oh, enemies. You know. Then you say, you know, I, I, I don't. But basically, it's like, you know, you are scorched. You feel burnt. So angry. Who are enemies? Enemies are those who are standing in your way when you are trying to reach for something that you want. Whatever it is. Where the people, where the conditions, where the things. So we would even lash out at an inanimate object that is standing in our way if we can't get what we want. People, conditions, things can be easily become enemies when our desires are being frustrated. When we cannot achieve uh, our desires. So whether because it was uh, secretly stolen from us, taken away from us, or openly uh, robbed, and we try to fight back, but to no effect. When that happens, our hearts are scorched, on fire.
Really, you should practice the Dharma by relying on a qualified Lama, and perhaps then it won't have to be like this. Then, gossip about other women and their manners interests you. The affairs of sons and nephews get your attention, and the babble on relatives and widows delights you. <laughs> Describing, you know, um, what's commonly seen yeah, in that culture. When these three conditions convene, when they come together, grandma, whenever these conditions come together, look at your heart. And it says, you've turned into an avid listener. Yeah. Normally, you don't, you know, ah, could care less. But when these things are going on, ooh. <laughs> right? So whether we're literally grandma or not, we, we, we have our own versions of that. So related to right now. So we go searching for things that kind of feed our fire. Become avid listener. Whew. This babble on relatives and widows delights us. I said, but really, you should practice the Dharma. And then perhaps it won't have to be like this. Here is talking about, you know, basically talking about things and other people that you, you can't really do anything about. And talking about it's not going to do anything. You know, if you're really concerned about the widows, you're really concerned about sons and nephews, there are things you can do. But to get caught up in all the sound bites. Yes, it's really better to practice the Dharma. Then perhaps it won't have to be like this. Oh, now, <laughs> talking about old age. To get up is like yanking a peg out of the ground. <laughs> With feeble legs, you wobble like a thieving goose. <laughs> Earth and stone seem to shatter when you drop into a seat. <laughs> you know, with a sense of humor, but it's so true. I think, you know, if we're lucky enough, I guess we'll get to that point where to get up is like yanking, right? So much effort we have to put into just getting up. It's like yanking a peg out of the ground. And my dad says, and your day is coming. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky, right? And then, well, lucky or not, who knows? But you know, meaning you, you, you don't die before this happens. But when this happens, it's probably you're feeling this is not so lucky. I should have died already, maybe. <laughs> With feeble legs, you wobble like a thieving goose. Right? Imagine a goose trying to steal something, you know? The Holy Bible refers to that as the evil days. The evil days, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you're like going wobbling, 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 you know? Trying to steal something. And then when you sit down, you know, it seems like the earth and stone is going to shatter. You know, <laughs> when these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the thoughts in your mind, which is what the original, so I didn't move all of it. Uh, you could change it if you want. Look at the movings uh, in your heart. You have no choice but obey your senility and weakness. <laughs> Becoming senile and weak. What choice do you have? You know? But really, you should practice the Dharma. 
Perhaps then it won't have to be like this. You won't feel hopeless is what it's talking about here. You won't feel hopeless. Uh, the article that the Dalai Lama co-authored uh, and published before the elections, talking about his um, thought on why, uh, despite everything seem, seemingly on one level, you know, people, more people are educated now, people are living longer now, um, but yet, ironically, in the developed countries, there is more paranoia and fear and, and anger. And he says that it's because people feel unneeded. And one of the strongest ways of feeling unneeded in this culture is losing one's livelihood. Yes, there's the aspect of losing the ability to care for your own family. And that's devastating. But I think he meant it that more than that, it's not just that you have become unneeded or not able to meet the needs of your family, but your own self-identity seems to be obliterated when you don't have work. Mm. And um, so it's about, another way to put it, is helplessness and self-worth is so much anchored on being productive, right? The, the Calvinist ethic, uh, being productive, being a productive citizen. Uh, make yourself useful. Uh, we see how everybody is busy making themselves useful. There's a lot to be said about that, actually. There is a lot to be said about that. The level of volunteerism in this country, I think, partly comes from that. Make yourself useful. Uh, don't just sit there. So there's a lot to be said about aspects of this, uh, I feel. But then it comes at a price, you know, if we're not careful. Which is, you can only feel useful if you are doing something in, that produces a materialist result. A materially based result. And other than that, you're not valued. In contrast, I see this in still, but I don't know for how long actually, so I don't want this to sound like it's an East-West thing, Asian and Western, but, but it's slower, this change. So in Asia, you can still see people with the attitude because like, for example, in Japan, that has changed. It changed after the Second World War, where productivity, in order to rebuild their country after the war, was emphasized more than anything. And everyone's identity is tied with their work, or, or men. Women did not work outside of the homes that have changed, but men's identity are always linked to work. People will introduce themselves as, you know, I'm Mr. Brown of the you know, Honda Corporation. You know, I'm Mr. Lee of the, you know, uh, you know, whatever, right, company. Uh, that's the part of their identity. And older people, um, so just to make the point that this is not East-West, uh, Japan has uh, some of the highest suicide rates among the elderly. Um, but in contrast, Tibetan society, till now, uh, older people don't, not such a strong feeling of being useless or no longer valuable. Uh, 
not so much, you know, that, I mean, individuals might feel like that, but uh, due to their own personal circumstances, as a culture, that's not something that people consider to be the norm. Uh, if, if that happens, it's more like, oh, something went wrong. Rather, a lot of the old people, look at these pictures, actually. A lot of them are of older Tibetans. What do you see? Experience. Prayer wheel in hand. Of course, they were attending uh, a prayer festival. But even when they're not attending prayer festival, sitting, chatting with friends, yeah, this. But the fact is they're attending the prayer festivals that are organized like many times throughout the year. And all of them would gather, that's at the community center, and turn their prayer wheels and be with their friends and recite the mantra of compassion. Om Mani Peme Hong, Om Mani Peme Hong, Om Mani Peme Hong, Om Mani Peme Hong. Whole day. And they're happy and content. And they say, Now I can pray for the happiness of all beings. Earlier in my life, I have to take care of my family. I have to provide for my family. I have no choice to practice. I have no leisure. I can only take care of my own family then. But now, I don't have to worry about my own family anymore. I don't have to just limit it to working endlessly for my own family. Now, I can think of all sentient beings. And this is meaningful. This. Even as simple as just turning this. As they go about, they are not... I also don't want to give the image that they are very spiritual and special. But there is something special. But in their day-to-day -day interaction with each other, perhaps catching up on gossip even, and perhaps their own version of, Oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Oh, bless her heart. But while doing all of that, they have their prayer wheel. Uh, even in between engaging in less than skillful speech, yeah, their minds can get reminded. Turn the wheel of compassion. Turn the wheel of compassion. Turn the wheel of compassion. Yeah. They say, you know, now I'm done. I don't need to produce stuff anymore. I don't have to farm anymore. Yeah. This is... This is my time yeah, to benefit other beings by simply offering prayers. That's not quite here, you know. If you are older, you are admired. If you live a, quote-unquote, what? Long life. No, no, no. Here in this country, you're admired. Successful? Well, when you're older, people admire you. Active life. Oh, look at her. She's so active. Look at him. He's so active. So we emphasize, you know, do, do, do. No, we don't say, oh, look at her, you know, praying. Only if you do. Then what, what, what about when you can't do anymore? Which is how nature takes its course. At a certain point, you can't do anymore. Then what? Then completely, you know. I think many people, or a number, well, I don't know. I think some people can make the transition, but many find it very hard to make that transition. No one's going to come and say, oh, wow, I really admire that you're praying for all sentient beings. You know? People can only say, oh, so pity, you know? She was so active. And then suddenly, da 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 da.
so if 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 we just you know value being active, being productive, and all of that uh, in our own the way we look at ourselves, then we will be exactly like this. You have no choice but to obey your senility and weakness. But if you practice the Dharma, then maybe it doesn't have to be like this. That you can actually look forward to. Ah, don't need to do that anymore. (laughs) Wrinkles crease your skin without. Your bones stand out sharply from your shrunken flesh. And between you are turning senile, deaf, blind, and dumb. Losing your mental faculties. Can't hear that well anymore. Can't see that well anymore. No energy to speak anymore. Right? So when these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. You're now a scowling old crone. <laughs> <laughs> Really, you should practice the Dharma. (laughs) Then your food and drink is cold and foul. Your coat is heavy and in rags, and your bed is so rough it tears your skin. Now, bear in mind that she's in a fairly well-to-do family. And this is not necessarily talking about the actual conditions that she's, you know, having to sleep uh, on rough bed, but it feels that way. So when these three conditions convene, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. You think you're now half human and half dog. In this culture, dogs are kind of considered lowly. I don't know what will we say here. Half human, half rodent. Rodent, yes. <laughs> Snake. But really, you should practice the Dharma by relying on the qualified Lama. And perhaps then it won't have to be like this. An opportune birth and liberation are rarer than stars seen in daytime. To be involved in samsara and descend to the lower realms is more common than your daily aches and pains, which is constant for her. At this miserable time when you are about to leave your body, Grandma, look at the movings in your heart. Can you face death with confidence? That's the final question. Can you face death with confidence? Can we face death with confidence? Confidence in what? Confidence in knowing that we have done what can be done to free ourselves from afflictive emotions, from confusion, and to bring forth the Buddha qualities, and to rest in the confidence of the Buddha state. Then there is no birth and there is no death. Then you cut through birth and death like the earlier song. Really, you should practice the Dharma by relying on a qualified Lama. This stanza is missing the last line. Yes. Cancer. Right. It's it's deliberate there. It's not an uh, editorial mistake. Um, it's not their last line. And perhaps then it won't have to be like this. Because at this point, it's like, you want to be certain in, a, in your death moment. There's no doubt in your mind. Thank mm-hmm. you.
Death is certain. Nothing else is. So in that moment, the certainty of confidence that it's all going to be fine has to be there. <laughs> so, so he believes, you know, he has. And then later at his death, you know, Milarepa himself, you know, he says, you know, that he knows for sure. There's no doubt you know, that he's free. So the rest of it, the rest of that is there has this quality of, you know, who knows, who knows, who knows. Uh, but here, at the time of death, uh, it cannot be who knows, because if who knows, that means you don't know. <laughs> then, you know, screw it. <laughs> so this is the song of nine meanings. Uh, as always, the Basilica tells us it's time to conclude. So in the sadhana, tomorrow we will continue with the recitation part. Uh, but now, let us turn to page 41 of this. Go to page 41. 41 in the book, in the smaller booklet. <clears throat> the dedication prayers at the conclusion. <clears throat> so we'll do this together. As the conquerors and their heirs dedicated the virtues accumulated in the three times and the innately present virtue, I too follow in their steps and dedicate these virtues as means for attaining the great non-abiding awakening. In the clear sky of Dharma Dhatu, may the bondage of all migratory beings, the snake's knot of ego fixation, unravel itself, and attain the non mentation innate co-emergence, the level of Dharmakaya Vajadhara. May Lord Mila, the embodiment of the compassions of all conquerors, be my guru throughout all of my lifetimes. May I pacify the obstacles on the supreme and ordinary paths. And from within the state of luminosity, may I liberate migratory beings. 43. May the blessings of the root and lineage gurus gather like a heap of clouds, removing the sorrows of the realms of existence. May the cities of the Edam deities shower like a perpetual rain, increasing the harvest of benefit and joy. May the activities of the Dakinis flash swiftly like lightning, dispelling the darkness of obstacles by the Maras. May the power of the Dharmapala shower like a rain of Vajra fire, annihilating the hostile army of limbs leaders. May the splendor of blessings of the drops of the elixir of the whispered lineage of Shepar Dorje, the crown jewel of hundreds of siddhas, shine brightly as the glory of the beings in the three realms, completely eliminating the darkness of samsara. So this text is based on an older text called The Drops of Elixir of the Whispered Lineage, this meditation text. Which is said that the goddess, the Tashi Serengma, uh, gave to um, the first Chesang uh, Rinpoche. And so tomorrow we will continue um, at 10. Uh, if you're going to join us, and if you can, bring some kind of uh, food offering that can be easily shared, uh, even just 
a fruit, you know, something like that. Um, it's, there's, a, there's a feast offering associated with this text, uh, but we're not going to do it you know, in the style that we normally do, where there's plenty of food and all of that. But just, you know, if you can bring something uh, that we will even just have a plate, you know, uh, it could also be a liquid like juice or something like that. Um, then we can offer that as part of this text, part of this practice. There's a talk associated with this. Thank you for listening to the Urban Dharma NC podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, we hope you'll consider supporting our mission to foster a deeper understanding of the teachings of the Buddha, to build meaningful community, and to integrate contemplative teachings into everyday life. We invite you to make a donation online at udharmanc.com or make a purchase at our store, tibetanspirit.com. Thank you. May all beings benefit.